Yeah, I'm going to push my hand. I'm the coach, Ron, keep me balanced. Ah, oh, it was fun. Janet with tears, not at all. She won an Oscar yeah. a couple of years ago. Yeah. For a film I've ever made. No, it's funny. She, she offered me a pole, lad. She said, oh, come on, let's have a cup of tea for a minute. Well, I've been trying so long. long. Yeah. Janet with tears, probably yeah. because yeah. she's she <laughs> playing ball though. with me at the moment. But you wish you hadn't to come. Come here, he hasn't got his ears in. That's what I should. He still won't hear you. I, I can do that. He don't have to listen to me at all. He's, he's very because he's only got them that can't hear. They're irritating his ears. I had to bear the week. I think I might have ate it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the photo I put on Facebook of me on the west side. And I'm saying that you and Jess sit in the background of outside the pub. There's two old blokes sitting there. And I said, there's Ken and Jess in the background. I mean, you seen on my Facebook page. And I'm standing there. The woman took, she wanted to take a photo of me and the son, you see. And they said, let me have one of your own. So I was standing there. And there's, it's like the open front of a pub. There's two old blokes sitting there. And I said, there's Ken and Jess sitting yeah. in the background. <laughs> Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like that. Two old blokes. That's a kid in Jess. Yeah. Hey. Especially the blokes. <laughs> oh, boy, they're coming for the young one, you know. Oh, I didn't ever say that when I was young, did I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. hey. I, I was in with you, remember? <laughs> <laughs> Many, many, many years. There's electric plugs. No, it's all right. It's, uh, this is it's all run by batteries. There's it's electric it's plugs either side if you need them. No, I'm, I'm fine, seriously, mate. I've just got a bit of a problem with this. I think it's a bit oh, damp at the moment. I'm just trying to get the recorder, oh. audio recorder working. Oh. Ah, here we go. There's some more this side. Oh, there's some more there. I heard about the light plug. Oh, oh, I bottle. bottle. I just noticed the bottle's hanging off. Oh, oh some down there and some up there and some in there. I know, why not just a lot of bottles? <coughs> you got a thing that's hanging down now. Yeah, that. Yeah, it's alright. It's just a little door. Right. Where is that on now? It's a Taz cam cover. Hey, I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> now the technical term for it's a thingy. Yeah, yeah. What's it's a thingy don't work. <laughs> ah, air gap. Ha! There you go. See. <laughs> Good job you guys ain't depending on me for your life, innit? Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah, you're stuffed. Nice. Sorry, lads, I forgot the bullets. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be glad. It's all right, we couldn't, we couldn't <laughs> use them anyway. You've got to pick a card and say, Excuse me, lads, yeah, don't shoot true, at yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. We can't shoot you back. <laughs> <laughs> and if we do, 40 years' time, we'll get the charge. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just practically that in Northern Ireland, wasn't it? Yeah. You can't shoot a petrol bomb. <laughs> well, I wouldn't bother. <laughs> well, I guess I'm the panic six year old, so they ain't bothered them, then they could be you and kids. Petrol. Then, my wife, he married a six year old and he consummated the marriage. When she was not. So we can do that here. That's what they believe. That's what they believe. Peter Phillips. He was very vain, that chap was, apparently, he took it in the paper. He was in prison and he used to be very vain and he'd watch these things and he'd see them. Then he'd, 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 he'd been out for a few weeks and he'd have a cup of stuff with a bit old for loose weight to make him, you know, all vain and it was If it was getting worse then, when you couldn't do it, it was just like, what must it be like? Well, that Polish chef was his hero, wasn't he? Sorry? That Polish chef was a hero. He pushed him out to the street. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going <coughs> to count and then clap my hands to sync, so I can sync this audio stuff up after. Three, two, one! Happy birthday to you. <laughs> 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 uh, we're going to have fun with you, ain't we? You've got to get in here. <laughs> I'm surprised when you clap, we didn't all dive underneath the table. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh yeah, never thought of that. God, they did, they shot something when we were at the museum, didn't they? When they sent oh, through the blimey. Me. <laughs> and we went in the, um, they've got the, the place where you go in like it's... Um, the, the, the Moy? No, oh, Nick, what's the word? The, like the, where they go when, um, the air raid shelter, that's what I'm thinking of. Air raid shelter. Where you go in and oh, sit yeah. in there and then they do the noise like the... Yeah, they've got like a simulator stuff. thing, you sit in... You know, this room, and, and then you press this button, and like you can hear the bombers coming over, and then the bombers drop in, oh, and, yeah, yeah, and the yeah. fire engines with the bells where's ringing. The, where's and this? Stuff. At the it's regimental the museum. museum. Oh, oh, museum. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No, they're, 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 they're bringing more new that, stuff in all the time. New stuff. Yeah. Oh, but right. I remember such. I was, I was uh, a kid when the war was on. I remember all the running to school with the gas mask and... So where did you listen. go for an air raid shelter? You can, That's take, all, you can take it off now, Jeff. Was <laughs> <laughs> it like a um, yeah. Anderson shelter? We didn't have one. We, we all sat under the stairs. My mother wouldn't... We had a dog, you see, and there was a big air raid shelter at the top of the road built on the pack. And I said, you can't bring your dog in. And my mother said, where? Well, I'll go, my dog goes. And I said, well, he can't. Sure so we all sat... You know, under the stairs, the alcove. Yeah. We put a blanket across there and a candle, and there was eight of us sitting. Oh <laughs> and my dad worked all night and he used to run off in, in an air raid. You'd be all right. You'd be all right. <laughs> and then run back to work. We still got an air raid shelter in our, in our allotment. Have you? Yeah. yeah, a brick one. You know, the, the, oh, um, right. like uh, for, for for the um, local residents. Mm. It's one of the, on the main road. On the main pen road. Have you got one? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know, Jack. I've yeah. seen the place where they dropped the bomb next to the orphanage. Yeah. Have you seen that? No. Yeah. That field opposite? Dip, yeah. Well, it, no, it's on the same side as the mm. orphanage, and it's a big dip, and there's trees around it. Yeah. That's where the bomb dropped. Oh, I didn't know. I remember that. Were the houses there when it dropped? Uh, no, piece no. of piece of land. So just me. And uh, my dad said that'd be after Fisher bearings, you know, because I was bull bearing factory. Uh, I remember that. My mother was, uh, we had, because we was a big family, there was ten of us. She had a four bedroom house and an attic. Oh, yeah. And I, my, I can see my mother now was scrubbing the stairs. And it was during the daylight, the bomb did. And it went off. And uh, I, my mother said, oh, good God. And I said, what's the matter, Mum? And I said, nothing, nothing. And I just carried on. And that dropped the bomb. And the guns on, um, I used to wear them regular on Bush Beale. They had the anti aircraft yeah. guns on there, you'd hear them going off and not be all, they'd all be shattered all in the, <laughs> on the stairs. But my mother never showed any panic, never panicked. No other family, it's how you be all right, you'd be all right. You'd hear the planes go over and say, that's a door, yeah. <laughs> that's an old gun. <laughs> Were there any buildings destroyed in Wolves? Was there any buildings destroyed by bombs? Any. Buildings? Yeah, the next street was bombed. Jim had a bomb go what through. Bomb through our house. Did you? No, yeah. big bomb. It was like an incendiary bomb. Because we lived opposite the power station in Commercial Road. Right. And that they, the Germans knew where everything is, was, you know. And we, you know, they de devastated Coventry, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Flattened it, didn't they? Coventry. The only thing I can remember is they we had the railway running at the bottom of our garden and they set that on fire one night, all the railway was on fire. Down East Town? Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, yeah. Ashbourne Road. Mm -hmm. the, the railway was all on fire. Then I remember Coventry. My dad said, oh, Brummagem's having it tonight. But it wasn't. It was Coventry. You could see it from mm -hmm. East Town. You could see Coventry a little. They thought it was brum, you should have been it at brum. I was only a little baby in a cotton do. Yeah. Yeah. I can remember things. You, know, you, you don't appreciate it. I wasn't even really four. four. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. I was only three. Oh, give it to them, I might not be here tomorrow. <laughs> where are we going, Mum? Yeah. Where are we going? <laughs> it's out like, now, where? You've just seen it. We won't be here tomorrow. <laughs> I'm filming this by the way guys, so you just carry on talking 
Brilliant. Oh, 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 <laughs> just, just reminisce with Helen oh, about. Okay. You didn't your, do that bit your, where he said he wore a gas mask and I said you can take it off. Yeah, you. I got that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> It's, it's yeah, you can only talk it. Which leg? So we'll get the it's so Which leg am I going to kick when he gets up? <laughs> yeah. Make sure it's the left one. Now, as I was saying to you in the pub, if the sarcasm in the army, you know, if they're not sarcastic towards you, they don't like you. <laughs> if they're no, nice here, then, you know. Yeah, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. The more sarcastic yeah, they are, the Probably owe them some money or something. <laughs> I mean, he's the best local bloke in the regiment, you was. He's oh, always well, been sarcastic. Oh. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Never been anything else? Well, we've, we've got a, a full family full of sarcasm, haven't we? Oh, gosh. When yeah. my son used, my eldest son used to go to school and someone was sarcastic, he was like, that's nothing. You need to come home. Yeah. We've got really good teachers at home. It's just banter with the army. It's just good. So well, you're banter. It's anything beyond banter. Is, yeah. I mean, I, 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 had a woman, I had a woman stand up for me because the bloke would turn around to me and was calling me hoppy. He said, well, that's not very nice. You know, he's lost his leg. And I said, well, it's all right. I said, that, you know, he likes me. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> this is a big <laughs> Our nickname's Steak. I mean, my name's Richard. Richard Clive. Richard Clive Owen. But when I went in the army and I said, what's your name? And I said, Owen. There was an American runner, wasn't there? Jesse, Jesse Owen. Owen. And I said, oh, Jesse. And that has stuck yeah, ever since. Ever since. So I Nobody that, knows Jesse's me not, as Richard. No, Jesse's not a very common name for your no, age, no, no. is it? No, no. no. It, 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 was a, it was a bloke named Jimmy Presley. He said, oh, Jesse. And that just stuck, and it's gone on. Well, since and 59, because when I, answered, I, answered, I knew you in 59. I mean, I went to school with him, and I was known as Dick Owen, or Richard Owen. He calls me Jess. And I went to school. We, we were classmates. So you three were at school together? No, no we just oh, Jim and Mike. Ken and I was in. Of course, you're much younger, aren't you? No, no, no. Next is he's on. <laughs> Ken and I was um, in the army together. I was a, a little bit before. Him. Did you serve in the same regiment? Were you in? Yeah. No, not Jim. Not he not was Jim, Jim artillery. Was in long, long range, just it's long range snipers. <laughs> yeah, long range snipers. <laughs> I was called I was called Doctor Ari because when I was in charge I was the medic on well, my surname Terry and so when they come Doc and then Doc Terry Doctor Ari but I'm <laughs> sure they were really talking about that cross-eyed lion. <laughs> 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 yeah. Probably. Yeah, yeah. So what, what did you two end up as then? You named not really Jim. Is it something different? Oh, no, I'm Jim. You're definitely Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been Ken all the time. And then, and then when I left the regiment and joined the Ordnance Corps, that's when they turned on me. Did they? Because I became yeah. a yeah. sergeant major. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> he's too nice. He's one of the nicest guys. He was put a nice. sergeant major. And that when you meant to start shouting? And well, you have to. Not when to. You have, have to. to. Yeah. <laughs> you're not allowed to swear this anymore, are you? You're not allowed to swear? No, you're not allowed no. to swear on the parade. Pro right? Nowadays, nowadays apparently. <clears throat> We hear through the depots and whatnot. You're not allowed to swear. Did you swear on the program then? <laughs> Many <a> times, <laughs> like a trooper. Many a times. I had. 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 I just turned and I said, oh, no, not you, Pear. Walking down the back of the square, the square so there I was, there. Yeah. <laughs> I, was a, I was a teddy boy in my youth, and I uh, got a lovely sky blue suit, black velvet collar, <laughs> with thick crepe sole, oh. blue suede shoes. Went to uh, recruit it, went, went in, and the sergeant major said, that's the last time you'll see you in that series. Not wear that again. And I never did. <laughs> did never you? Did. <laughs> I so had to buy another suit. What I? made you go into the army? Sorry? What made you go into the army? I was called up. Oh, you were? I was called up and then I signed on. Because it was about 15 shilling for the national service. When it was three guineas if you signed on. Yeah. Well, I'd had, I'd had a job before I went in. I was earning more money, and my dad, at the age of 17, was working three shifts in a rolling mill, which was hard, hot work, but I got good money. 
So 15 shilling might any good to me. <laughs> What's that, 75 pence? Still got that nowadays, eh? And I signed on for... Where and I enjoyed yours? it and I signed on again after I've kept on. So how old were you when you when you signed up? 18. I was 18. I was but it was before you'd got your yeah. conscription papers? Yeah. Well, you had no choice. You've got to go in yeah. one way or the other. And I wanted, I wanted to, to be a driver. And, they, and I said, I'd be, I said, well, we can't guarantee that. But if you sign on, we, we can guarantee. So I signed on to be a driver. And then... And did, they, did, did you become a driver? Yeah, yeah. On the bike. I signed on because um, I wanted to go with... The, I've got a, a relation who come through the ranks in the South Staffordshire Regiment. Oh. Um, he joined the army as a young boy, 14, in those days, before the First World War. And uh, when I was called up, he said, try and get in the South Staffords. Try and get in the South Staff and speak, you'll be all right. Well, that's said, where do you want to go? And I said, that, that's a we can't guarantee it, um, you know, but uh, if you want to sign on. So I said, well, I thought about it. But then I did, I, you know, I was called up and I signed on to make sure I got in the South Staff. And where did then, you go for your... Square bashing, where did you go for that? You know, where the barracks was, where the... Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, you were yeah. there, were you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was our regimental... Oh, our right. memorials are in there. It's really, yeah, really it's interesting that, yeah. if you can get in there. But it's altered so much. But there's still one or two blocks, you know, that have been up before the First World War, you know. The barracks was going, I don't know how long it's been there, 18-something oh, yeah. or other. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's from 1959 when I when I first got there. Yeah. It was 1957 when I got there. We had to give our notice in you know, else you stopped on for the next three three years. Because once you did 22 years with a three year option. 22 with a three year option. But, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. You, but once you to... waived your three year option, you, you went straight on to six year option. And that's why I wouldn't <coughs> do it again on the way. That and other business going on. We, we don't want to know about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so did you you both signed up as well did you yeah yeah oh, yeah. oh well national service had finished had national service finished tony no, no, tony no. was in as a boy mm -hmm. was tony 16. was a boy so yeah, yeah. I, left, I left school and i got i got a job in a factory it's called turner's manufacturing just gear cut and stuff i got really bored stuck there you know from eight till five i wrote for mm -hmm. so i went to the army information they told me all about it. I went home, I said to me, well, can I join the army? No. And I said, okay, thank you very much. And I went in as a boy soldier at a place called Tom Fanon in uh, Wales. And then I went straight to the regiment. I didn't, I didn't touch for the real. I didn't, I didn't know you could, you could go in at 16. I thought you had to No, be. boy soldier. Boy no, boy soldier. soldier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then when you, when you come 15, at 17, you go and join the regiment. Yeah. And I joined them down there in 1964, when they just come back from Kenya. It was a training NCO for the boy soldiers when they went. There were drummer boys and band boys at the barracks, uh, you know, from 15. When they were 17 and a half, they went on to man service then. They joined the battalion. And, uh, so was, was being a boy soldier... Exactly the same as being a man soldier. It was. You were treated was. exactly the same. Okay. You wore a different train. uniform. They wore a uniform from the 1914-18 war. Oh, with right. the collar all fashioned up here, and, okay. and the, you know, whereas uh, the others, you wore battle dress, you know, and the collar and top. But the boy soldiers used to wear this uh, First World War uniform. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when did you go out to Northern Ireland first? Was that the first place you you were posted out to? No, no. Um, with me, with me, British Honduras, uh, Cyprus. Then Northern Ireland started up. So then we went over there for the first month, for the four months, and then the second tour, and this happened. So. And were you? Yeah. When? How long did it take you to get well again, so that you could? Well, apparently I was. Fortnight. I was so good. <laughs> <laughs> now they said I was so good. <laughs> they said they'd never seen anybody so fast on the leg. Even the physiotherapist kept telling me to sit down, which is unusual for a physiotherapist. But I got back to the regiment, I want to get back to the regiment, you see, so when I, when I first went in there, the doctors come around and said, right, who's on my list? 
And I said, oh, my, me, I'm on your list. I'll be out in about 30 days. And they said, OK. And then another doctor coming who was on my list. I said the same to him. 30 days later, I went to sit so up and he says, how the hell did you do this? You should still be in Because <laughs> all the doctors put me down for 30 days. So. And then I've learned how to walk on the leg and back to the regiment as a signals instructor. So I didn't have to march anywhere. Yeah. I hopped across the parade ground every so often. Yeah, but that was a joke, you can laugh if you want. Yeah. <laughs> you really, you sure? <laughs> Shall I tell the other jokes? Shall I tell the other one? <laughs> he had blonde hair and you said he's fat. Oh no, yeah. I did, yeah. First time I saw him <laughs> on Facebook, prior to when I was in the army, I saw him in 64 when he joined us in Kenya. Nice, young, slim lad, everything, you know, yeah, yeah. That's how I remembered him. The next time I saw him, oh, many years <laughs> later, after I'd finished my service with the orders call, I saw him there and thought, good, go right into him. Grown up. Unbeknown to me at the time that he lost half his leg, I thought he saw the same lad. It's all that but good he lost living. a bit of it. It's all that good living, isn't it? Uh, exactly. Yeah. But I was telling everybody that when I left the army, I was going to be a policeman. But I was a foot short. So. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> I play cricket. He wouldn't have had a friend. He wouldn't have had a friend for the minute. I play cricket. Not in, not in the Staffords, any of them. Now the short Lego stumps. Another one I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> these, are, these are the humans, you know. This is, See, yeah, I have to be honest, because when you get yeah, back yeah, to the yeah. regiment, we had, we had an Irish bloke that was in the Staffords. Uh, Paddy. Paddy Laffin. Paddy Laffin. Laffin. So anyway, they. His wife was a bit funny, you see, because I'd just come back from Ireland after losing my leg. And she thought, I'm going to blame her because she's Irish and he's Irish and he's going to get it. So I thought, well, the only way to do it is break the ice because she was very friendly with my wife. So I made these jokes up. And as soon as they break the ice, that's it. You know, they know he's not yeah. going to pick on me. You're like a teenager you say? that. You can't put it down. <laughs> what did you say to her? Well, uh, Paddy Laffin's missus. If I... If I thought it was your fault, I'd have shot you. <laughs> That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me, in 59. That face there, could you recognise it? With the very back. Not without my glasses on, I can't. Oh! <laughs> it's, it's in my jacket. I'm old now. So I'll put your glasses on. It's in the other room. What are you like? Waste of time. Who is it? Tell me what it is. I really love his pattern now. He was in put a thing on, Tony put there, something on Facebook yeah. and, um, and Ken said, uh, thank you, old uh, yeah. Tony is the youngest of the lot of us. <laughs> <laughs> but I have put the leg, I took a photo of my artificial leg on the bed <laughs> and I've put on the top of it, the leg end, which is Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Ken, was there still, was there was conscript, conscription when you... Yes. And so were you waiting or did you sign up? No. no. I, 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 uh, I, lost, I lost my parents. I was the only one left in the family. All the rest are married and everything else. So I decided to speak to me. on. wouldn't speak to me. No, no, no. So I went, I went and signed on. And I think it was uh, the second week I was there at Whittington. I received a brown envelope from my sister. It had been called up papers. Oh, wow. I took it inside and he said, forget that son. You're a regular. Oh, no, that. Yeah. So that it, yeah. If you if you'd gone to sign up, if you'd gone in and you'd already got your conscription paper, then you couldn't become a regular because you'd already got those papers. No, oh, I, so I just you couldn't. I, I honestly don't know about that. All I know is that I enlisted, I volunteered to enlist, and then a few <coughs> weeks later, I came through the, to my sister's house where I was living at the time. She sent it to me, but I was already in the uniform. Mm -hmm. When no, I first met Ken, you're not we doing two up, years, you're doing that three years. It was in the back of a back of a lorry, and we're going up to Scotland uh, to do, <laughs> on a range. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he said, "Anybody heard that song?" And we said, "What song's that, Ken?" He said, "I don't know." He said, "He's well, he's got a smashing voice." He said, "A really bossy voice." He said, uh, "It's something." He'll, he'll have, have to go. go. He'll have to he'll go. go. What's the other words, Ken? I don't know. So we all sat there singing, he'll have to go. He'll have <laughs> to go. <laughs> he'll have all to go. All the way right to Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> we never found the rest of the bird, did we? <laughs> yeah, that's probably that was. Well, 
and then it started. Uh, Dick Smith knows my father. Yeah. Father knows Dick Smith. Dick Smith knows my father. My father knows Dick Smith. It just Dick goes Smith on. knows my father. My father knows Dick Smith. Is that it? Dick That's Smith. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's another one all the way to Scotland. Oh my God. And then there's another one. Ooh, yeah. He was saying goodbye to his horse. Yeah. Saying goodbye to his horse. And as he was saying goodbye to his horse, he was saying goodbye to his horse. Goodbye horse. Goodbye horse. <laughs> goodbye horse. <laughs> goodbye horse. <laughs> but this... These would go on for an hour or an hour and a half. You can then just There's one tired <laughs> There's one tired somebody else would take it. Oh. Oh. So that's why, why that's the going? army again, you know, it's yeah. the comradeship and why are we going up to Scotland? Oh, uh, to get rid of a lot of ammunition, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the ranges of the ranges. But we were going to turn ranges. Um, it was... We had jets flying over and uh, pretending to come in and sloop and, you know, as if he was in a battle. Yeah. It was on a big open range and we got live ammunition and firing and that. And the phosphorus grenades, we had to... I remember we went, went to, um, we went to church parade <laughs> in a little village, Carnoustie. Yeah, yeah. And there was one little church and that's a battalion was all going on church parade, so we all had to go into church. And the first hymn was onward, Christian soldiers. Onward. And everybody was standing there. <laughs> and the vicar was, oh, he'd never <laughs> seen anything like it. He said, oh, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Have you ever seen that film, Oh, What a Lovely Walk? Yeah. There's somewhere in the middle of that, there's um, a church parade. And they're all singing, and they get that Welsh voice in the background. And they're completely different words. That is what it's like. You know, it's, <laughs> it sounds good. But if you listen carefully, you can hear different words, in the, in, and he's got a beautiful voice, that Welsh guy. Yeah. I want a bad singer till tunes come out. Once yeah, yeah. Started, as soon as they make music, you had it. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> no, good after that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, how, yeah. how old were you when you were posted abroad? How, many, how long had you been in the army before you were saying. <laughs> How long was in the army? I'm going to ask someone with their ears in, am I? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, well, for the first time we went to Britain. How old were you? <laughs> How long had you been in the army before you were sent abroad? Oh. About <laughs> 18, 19. Yeah, so yeah. Like we 19. had an emergency to, uh, to Kenya. Oh, right. We went to Kenya first. But Six months, we were living under canvas, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. They'd scattered the battalion all over Kenya, and uh, Kenya, we used to call it then, it's yeah. Kenya now. It was Kenya then. Yeah. Um, and we, we were all stationed on different farms. The white farmers, they owned all the land. Mm. And uh, the Mau Mau had finished, but it had started to come up again. They was calling themselves the Land Freedom Army. So we went, the battalion was spread all over, uh, Protected, all over Kenya. Be. And we lived, in, we lived in, in tents, that's all we had. We had no barracks or anything. And we had all compound rations, you know, tin this and pom. I don't know whether you know what pom is. Pom Dried potato, potato with water. Oh, I know, yeah, yeah. 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 Nice. We, that's, yeah. that's what we had. And, and the gravy was uh, celery soup powder. And they'd pour that on, and then oh. it'd just turn like milk. I thought it was a piece of corned beef. <laughs> we lived on that, didn't we, for six yeah. months? Oh, no. We'd never had a bath. We'd never had. We we was going round trying to rig showers up for people with biscuit tins and an house pipe if we could get some water, and that's how we lived. But the next time we went, we had a proper barracks, didn't we? I was just about to say, whilst there. We, we, we didn't become the uh, the starving Staffords or something like yeah, that. Yeah, the only yeah. Staffords. Yeah. Somebody complained about the food we was having, and they uh, it was in the Express and Star at Wolverhampton, and oh. the hungry Staffords, and they sent somebody out, and they took them to Mombasa, which is right on the coast, a little island. They took them there, beautiful blue sea, and glass bottom boats. 
And I said, this is how we live. We'd never seen the sea. We'd never seen it. And, uh, and the express and star said, I, I can't understand why they're calling themselves the young Staffords. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we never had anything, did no, we? No, rubbish, we had this one. And the first place I went you to... went on, really. The first place I went to was British Honduras. I was 17, 18. And uh, it was all right for the first couple of months. I mean, you're in the jungle and stuff, training. And then all of a sudden there was a gossip that the Guatemalans were going to come and take over British Honduras. So the British Honduras people started rioting against us because they thought we were going to dump them and let the Guatemalans move in. Oh, so then we started having riots on the street. I was stabbed once with an ice pick. On the street, just walking down, I thought he'd just punch me, but he hit me in the side of the ice pick. And then uh, we cleared the streets and we had to pick people up and take them to the big stadium. And they were held at the stadium until they'd been interviewed and stuff. And we had one, he was a, he was a police guard, and he had a slip. And it was signed by the washerwoman of the governor. She does his washing, and he'd get this slip and she signed it for him. So he thought he could walk the street with a washerwoman slip on, but not be arrested. He was arrested. When, <laughs> when we were in Kenya, I don't know whether you've heard of, ever heard of Idi Amin. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. he was a regimental sergeant major in the King's African Rifles when we were there. And he was the heavyweight champion of East Africa, boxing. And our heavyweight fought him and knocked him out in the first round. And... Uh, that was Johnny John Spray. Johnny Spray. Spray. Yeah. Johnny Spray. He just a short shot left, yeah, and, yeah. and he went out like a light. Uh, in the army, I I think he didn't want to fight. I think he threw oh, the gun off. Ain't gonna mix it with him. I mean, he was a big thing, wasn't he? Oh, uh, Johnny. Yeah. I saw him. They uh, they had a regimental thing, and uh, they killed a. Uh, a cow. Do you remember when they tied the, the bull up? Yeah. And yeah, then they yeah, all yeah. run up with spears and killed it and before you knew where he was, it was skinned and cut up and everything. It was just, oh, never seen such a gory mess in all my life. That's how it was. Did any of you get in? Because when we were talking to um, Cyril, he'd been put on... Um, Junkers. He'd been in trouble for being late, basically. Restricted privileges. That's the one. When have you been naughty? Yeah, I was in thrown in jail. In British Honduras. <laughs> <laughs> well, we was let off for the night. I mean, three nights we've been out picking people up. So they said, right, you can go back to the camp, have a night off. We went back to the camp. And we said, we'll go to the bar just down the road. Well, that was absolutely jam-packed. So we went to the bar further down the road. What we didn't realise, that bar further down the road was in the area where you're not supposed to be. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Yeah. So we were sitting there drinking, a sergeant major come along back from the town, seen us, said, get in the wagon. He says, go and have a drink. Get in the wagon. I said, okay. Went back to the camp and he threw us in jail and we got a day's pay. Fine the next day for being out of bounds. We went, it was out in uh, Nairobi and uh, he was all on dr uh, drinking and he'd come. And that's, we, uh, not, uh, Kahawa camp yeah. was 15 miles from N Nairobi. Yeah. So um, he said, have we got enough, there was three of us, have we got enough money to get a taxi? And we just about, we just about had got enough money to get, in, to get a taxi. So we called a taxi and uh, we sort of staggered to it. But what they did, there was three of us sitting on the back seat and another bloke jumped in the front. And I thought we got three drunken soldiers. They took us to an outer bound area, pulled onto this garage round the back and uh, we knew what was going to happen. I was going to try and what they call rollers, you know, robbers. We got no, we only got the taxi fare in here. <laughs> I wouldn't have got a lot, but um, it finished up with a right ball. We uh, we wrecked the taxi. <laughs> we got arrested, and I wouldn't give them my name. I said, "Don't give them your name." The the inspector was a Indian Sikh. And the coppers was all African, and I ain't kidding you. The the one one under six foot six foot six foot seven, that was massive blow. <laughs> and I said, "What's your name?" And I said, "Don't tell." I said, "We want the military police here." They were two privates, and I was a corporal. You see, they were taking some notice of me. I don't know what. But I said, "We don't don't give them your name." I said, "We want the military police here. We're in outer bounds area." 
and uh, it's a, this uh, big black African copper said to eat me. The inspector wants your name. I said, well, he's not going to have it. And he, he put his hand, he grabbed me, and he, his, his hand was on the, on the desk, and he grabbed me with one hand, and there was a big glass ashtray. And I picked the ashtray and smashed it on his hand. And I went, he lifted me up. I went, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't kidding. But they let us go in the finish. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't let them. That. I said, well, don't get in any more taxis. We had to walk back the, the 14 mile to... Kahawa. It was funny that. But about six months later, yeah. a young recruit who had gone out there, he did the same thing, got in a taxi, two blobs got in, they stripped him naked, beat him to death. Oh my goodness. They got uh, they got sentenced to 20, 20, 20 years. years. Yeah. But we um Kenya had become then independent. And he did about four months, didn't Somewhere, he? Yeah, yeah. Really? And yeah, that that's out. all he got. And he killed his young lad. That oh, killed his young lad. That's and beat him to death in the night. They stripped him, everything to death. Mm. Yeah. That's when basically the regiment went down to Nairobi. Oh, they went down to Nairobi and they wrecked it. Wrecked it. They wrecked yeah. it. Every taxi the, was the turned MPs upside were down. Along, picking you up. And they reckon it was a prostitute who had got him, encouraged him to go in the taxi. Yeah. And um, the beat all the prostitutes. <laughs> I'd, I'd come home then, I didn't see that. I'd you come. missed that, you did. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I got demobbed. Were you still out there then, Kevin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there with my wife, a brand new daughter as well then. Oh, were you? You were all out there, weren't you? Yeah. Because I didn't, I, I was reading something at the um, the Regiment Museum, which was a much earlier, it was a much earlier war, but the, the wives were out in France and Spain with the with some of the, um, <coughs> I don't know if you've been there recently, but it's it's showing her carrying her husband home because he's exhausted or whatever. But um, that the wives were out there as well. I didn't mm -hmm. realise that the wives mm -hmm. could go. Well, the thought. wives came. Well, my wife, we got married in uh, sixty two, March sixty June June sixty two. I left there in August sixty two by the troop ship out to Kenya, and then she joined us in joined me in uh, <coughs> October. We were living in the hotel, Spread Eagle Hotel, in, in, uh, just outside Nairobi. Ken was out <coughs> in Cyprus when, they, uh, um, Turks when the Turks invaded oh, and uh, yeah, was he there. was collecting dead bodies up and everything. Was you there as well? Yeah, we used to keep them apart. Yeah. 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 We could see the Turks coming from the, uh, the mountains, coming down that way, They're advancing towards us. Jim and I had a nice you know, little you know, in a real. You know, <laughs> yeah, it was it wasn't always yeah. yeah, yeah. But then they, they come advancing yeah. towards us. It was rough when all them scousers come <laughs> down <laughs> for a fortnight's yeah. holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we had a, an ultimatum come through from the then Turkish army. If you don't leave by midnight, we're coming right through. Because they wanted the airport behind us. Would anybody like a cup of tea? Engine, engine started up and everything else. Mate, was it? Time for me. Am I allowed? They didn't come through the two rounds. We've got time for a cup of tea. Yeah, if you want to take a break. Yeah. So